In the name of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. We have this Bread of Life discourse after the feeding of the 5,000 last week. And then we have this story today of Jesus kind of saying, oh, it's just all about the signs for you people, isn't it? Isn't that though the way we are as humans? Give me some proof. Let me see something. And Jesus continues to surprise us by saying, I am the bread of life. And I wonder as we think about what this means for us today and how we practice church and the sacraments and what they mean for us is something that I am kind of coming more and more into is an understanding of the sacraments. And what I'm talking about is baptism, um, Holy Eucharist, those rights that we have that are so valuable to us and so important, especially after we had been in this time of um, where we had to learn how to do this, be virtual, and that we couldn't receive communion together. And we still are doing morning prayer virtually because it is much better in this way. And it's much better to do morning prayer virtually than to try to do some sort of communion, in my opinion. So as we think about the sacraments, I think it's very important for us to wonder about them. And what does it mean when Jesus says, I am the bread of life? So sacrament, the definition is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. And what I have seen happen or experienced happen in my own life is that the sacraments somehow were turned into requirements. Uh, what I mean by that is that if we don't do these things a certain way, then somehow God will be displeased with us and we'll get in trouble. What I mean, for example, when I still get phone calls about baptisms and people say things like, we must get this baby baptized. And it's kind of with a sense of urgency and fear. Not, we get to baptize this baby and welcome her into the community that is her family. The family of God, the human family a community that will support her and nurture her and nourish her throughout her life. Instead, it's this thing that we might be doing for God so that if something, God forbid, was to happen to this child, God would somehow know what to do. So I have a hard time with that theory or that understanding of, um, of baptism. I do think that the sacraments are not requirements of God. They are gifts for us. At a baptism, we are able to celebrate new life. We are able to celebrate that this child or this adult is saying, hey, I'm a part of something bigger. The human family, the family of God. I am a child of God. And we are simply recognizing what is true. There is a beautiful understanding of what blessing means that comes from our Jewish brothers and sisters. Blessing is simply pointing out where God already is. And I believe that's what's happening in a baptism is that we are just pointing out where God has already begun a new thing and a great thing. And as we move to Holy Communion, I think there's something interesting about that where we have said that you have to do certain things in order to get communion. And that if you're not somehow, you know, whether that's go to confession, whether that's somehow having the right belief or the right understanding. I mean, there are, you know, denominations and the Episcopal Church has been a part of this in the past where it's saying only certain people can receive communion. But here at St. John's, we try to honor the fact that Eucharist, which the Greek word means thanksgiving, is a gift given to us for us. It is not a requirement given to us by God, but rather a gift for us. It is a weekly reminder when we are able to gather to give thanks for all that we have been given. It is this gift not a requirement. That's why we say week by week, 
no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of faith. Not only are you welcome with us, however you join us, we are also always welcome at God's table. And we need to remember that it's not St. John's table or the Episcopal Church's table or any kind of human construct that possesses that table. It is God's table and it's been given to us to share. And so as we wonder about how we practice our life as a Christian and how we see our sacraments, I think our understanding of that and our interpretation of that really matters. Because my posture changes greatly when I see baptism, Eucharist, a life of faith as a gift instead of a requirement. It's why I always say to people, you don't have to go to church. You get to go to church. If it's a have to, we come in with this attitude of duty and requirement. And it's usually not, at, we're, I'm not usually at my best when I feel like something is a have to. But if we can think about it as a get to, that we get to come to church, whether it's in person or virtually, we get to gather together, whether in person or virtually. And we get to do this journey of life together, wondering what it means to be a human, to ask the big questions together, to wonder how we might make the world a better place together. I have found that this year, as we're looking and trying to plan in a time that's really hard to plan because of how uncertain we are about what's coming, that one of the highest priorities that I have for this community is that we play together. Because the last 18, 20 months, we have all been working really hard. All of us, everyone. We've been working to keep people safe. We've been working at our jobs. We've been working whatever we've been doing. We have been working. But I have to tell you that I haven't done a lot of playing. And even when I've tried to kind of set aside time, it's been difficult. And I think that is going to be something that we really need to recover as a church, as a nation, as a community, as individuals, is remembering that life is a get to. It's a gift, the greatest gift of all. And so as we wonder about this bread of life, might we see that invitation from Jesus, I am the bread of life, as not some sort of requirement, but rather as a gift that Jesus is giving and that we might be surprised by that grace in our life. Pray for me that I will remember that the gifts that God so freely gives are gifts, not requirements. And may we eat that bread of life and may we share it with others in all things. Help us to be grateful. And thanks be to God that this year we might lean into playing together and remember that this is all a get to, not a have to. Amen.